Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from Key Duos. Now, I have been a big fan of Key Duos since the beginning. And since then we've had a very good working relationship. They have provided me many keyboards to test. And I have honestly never been dissatisfied with their keyboards. Um, the only thing that I wish that they would add is QMK Via, but you know, one battle at a time. Today, they have sent me out the NJ87 Pro. It's a TKL. Um, I believe it's aluminum. I don't know much about this keyboard at all. Like I said, I usually like to go into things a little bit blind so that I can be excited and surprised at the same time along with you guys. So today we're going to be taking a look at the NJ87 Pro from Key Duos, and I do believe it's a fully pre-built keyboard. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. Before we get into the keyboard, let's see what we have as far as accessories, what's in the box besides it. We have a few things here. We have a Key Duos um, instruction manual. Um, now I do believe a lot of their keyboards are primarily available uh, through AliExpress. Um, though I think they now have a shop as well. I have, I'll have to look that up and provide it in the technical section. Uh, but, uh, this can obviously, if you have an Android phone, you can use Google translate to get through the translation so that you could see the different features that it has and you can control it. So this does appear to be a three mode keyboard, uh, with 2.4 and Bluetooth from what I can gather. And it has some basic light controls and how you can get to print the scroll the pause buttons. All right, we will have to take a look at this a little bit further as we go into it. We also have a, um, basically, a, a, this is QA, QC. So somebody has inspected this keyboard and it was inspected just recently in February of 2024, 29th of February. So very recent indeed. We also have a few extra keycaps here. And if I had to guess, I would say, yep, these are for Macintosh. And they do appear to be, I think they are shine through. A little bit of gunk I'm going to have to clean off with some alcohol on the option key. We also have the front or side shine through. This is the command key. And this is the Windows key. All right, interesting. We also have the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. It doesn't say Key Duos on it. Key Duos, I would highly recommend silk screening or adding a sticker even that says the brand of the keyboard because that makes it easier to pair the dongles in case one, you know, falls off your desk, out of your box. You don't know when you come across and you're like, which keyboard does this go to? It's much easier when the brand is on here. I mean, brand and model would be even more perfect, but at least with the brand, it's easier to whittle it down to what keyboard it could be. And we have a standard uh, plastic USB-C to USB-A cable, as well as your standard keycap and key switch wire puller. And here we are with the Kidos NJ87 Pro. And I gotta say, this is a lovely aluminum um, case the lines on this are actually quite interesting. Oh, we've got an on switch. We went ahead and hit it on. We can see that we have those front shine through keycaps, which is very nice. Um, it appears we got two Windows keys. Uh, I guess one for on this side, because this is the darker one. Um, it looks like it's trying to pair at the moment. I would guess four is the 2.4 gigahertz, but the lines on this keyboard are actually quite nice. It has a side little LED diffuser on both of the sides. It has some really cool lines. I mean, it's a wedge design, but it's really very interesting. Um, that appears to be, maybe it's a weight, but it is a part of the case. And we have four, looks like maybe M2 bolts on the top and the bottom. Go ahead and turn this back on to off. But, ooh, that sounds really nice. This is a very, 
very nice, ready to go stock dock keyboard. What do we have under here? Oh, we have kale. We have some kale box switches and they're brown. They're a little bit more tactile than Gaineron Browns, but not really by much. They have a bit of a higher pitch to them. And I'm not usually a fan of uh, Kale Box switches, to be quite honest with you. But I am very pleased at how well these sound. I can only imagine it's going to sound much better with some different switches. We're going to stay stock just for today. So let me take a look. We do have a PC plate and it does appear to be gasket mounted. We do have plate mounted stabilizers. We do have an IXPE sheet, but no PET. Hmm. That's interesting. It actually sounds pretty good for just the IXPE sheet. We have some plate mounted stabilizers that are pretty well attached. The tolerances are good on them and they are nicely lubricated. We do have appears to be a thicker foam between the plate and the PCB as well as a closed cell foam down below. Now, out of curiosity Oh yeah, these are on there nice and tight. All right, it does appear that we have the possibility for screw and stabilizer. So that'll be something when I come back to this keyboard that we'll definitely add. And I may add uh, the PET sheet while I'm in there as well and see what kind of difference that makes. But so far, I've got to say, this is a very interesting keyboard. Now, I have another one from them that also arrived around the same time. It's their first magnetic keyboard. It's the NJ80 Magnetic. So, for all of you guys out there that love the NJ80 keyboard, I mean, it, it was and probably still ranks up there as one of the popular 75%. Well built. Um, the gasket implementation was a little bit better than on some others like the Fecker IK75. And, I mean... Mine is still going strong. It's wow, it's going on three years now that I've had it. And I do still rotate it in and out of my daily rotation. Uh, the only thing was that it was, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if I'm confusing it for the Fecker, but I may be confusing it with another one. I, I think that they only came in frosted colors, but I could be wrong. I could be mistaking that for another one. So it looks like we do have uh, pre-populated some OEM front or side shine through keycaps. What kind of thickness we're dealing with with these keycaps here? Oh, 1.5 millimeters. That is actually quite nice. They're not double shot fully all the way down, but they're almost completely double shot. Better than a top double shot. But 1.5 millimeters is a nice thickness to have. Um, if I had to guess, I would say these are ABS, but I could be wrong. I'll have to look up the specs here in a little bit. Um, that diffuser in the uh, switches is always nice. I'm, I've actually become quite fond of those because it does help to bring out the light. And um, especially when you're deal dealing with a PC plate, the PC plate also acts as a diffuser. So a lot of the light gets to leak or shine through in between the spaces of the keycaps. This one definitely has that stock thought. Pulling it out of the box and listening to it. Has a very nice tone on the deeper side for a lot of people. This is going to be more than enough. They're not going to need to want to do anything else. Or they're not going to have the want or need to do anything else. Because this is going to provide the experience that they're looking for. As far as, far as feel, it feels perfect. It's not too bouncy. So it's a nice, much uh, softer, not harsh at all, bottom out. And just enough to 
the uniformity on the rows is actually quite good. Usually you get to the top row of the number row and you'll have a significant difference between Usually there's a significance between the number row and the row below it, but they sound practically identical. So the construction here is definitely bar none. Now, as much as I want to get into it right now, I'm going to have to hold off because if I get into it, I'm going to want to start modding it. So we need to stick with stock today. So I'm just going to work with that for right now. Now, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of OEM keycaps, but in certain situations, they do offer a nice alternative to an SA. They obviously, most of the time, are a lot cheaper. But if I had a choice, I'd go with SA. But that's just me. But OEM on an OEM keyboard, it works. Plus, 1.5 millimeter thick keycaps and front shine through because they are south facing as well as the the ability to add screw and stabilizers that is a big plus we also have bluetooth and 2.4 so connectivity is covered and even though the, these are plate mounted stabilizers they are actually quite nice Let's see what we have under here Oh, took the switch with me. Yeah, we've got padding there to prevent that extra echo. No extra padding on the keyboard, so it's not a ghost bar, but it sounds a lot like it. Yeah, no PET plastic, just the IXPE. So I, I'll be interested to find out what this sounds like with, uh, with a PET and the IXPE. But like I said, the stabilizers are very, very well attached. So, but if you want, you can put in screw and stabilizers. And that's what I'll do when I come back to this um, to make sure that there's enough room. On, oh, helps if you put a switch in there, buddy. So I'll come back to this and we will replace with some screw and stabilizers to make sure that they fit uh, with the plate. I would rank these up there with probably in the top five of stock light mounted stabilizers I've dealt with. They've gotten better. I think these are made out of palm. They're they're properly lubricated and the wires are definitely balanced because there is no ticking. There's no extraneous noise. It just sounds like a keycap on a stabilizer bar. Um, I'm actually working on a video that'll show uh, I'm going to be focusing on the space bar, but for older keyboards, plate mounted, um, stabilizers, um, different ways to make your space bar sound the best way, the best possible way that it can sound and different little tricks and tips. Um, now, most of them will apply to all stabilizer keys, but I figured focusing on the one that usually gives us the most trouble, the space bar. So that'll be in an upcoming video. But obviously this one is not going to need that. Like I said, when I come back to this, we'll open it up. We'll take a look at what's in there. We will already have a stock sound test in the record so that we can provide comparisons between stock. And then, like I said, I'll, I'll probably change out the switches. I'll add PET. I may do something with taking out foam or adding foam or replacing foam and do with the screw and stabilizers and a different set of keycaps and we can tell how much difference it'll make even though i mean sounds really good right now but i'm positive with a few little tweaks we can make this sound even better i mean for a pre-built keyboard this is just it's nice and i gotta say i like i like the lines very simple kidos logo on the bottom uh, nice placement of the feet, um, even the flat uh, bolts or screws that are going in there seem nice. Um, everything about this, plus the, the side LEDs. I mean, that's uh, a lot of people like it, and I get why. Um, but it's just, it's 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 a slick looking um, machine here. Now let's see, we'll plug it back in and take a look at these lights. 
it comes on almost immediately. I do believe, yeah. We can cycle through the effects there. And we can see that the lights are actually pretty bright on here. Yeah, and that diffuser, as you can see, some of it's actually coming onto the plate and diffusing it out, but that light diffuser and the switch definitely makes a difference. And I'm not mad at this kale switch, gotta say. It's actually... I'm not the craziest fan of brown switches, but I don't abhor them or hate them. Uh, I just consider them more as a drunk linear than an actual tactile, but this one isn't bad. And I mean, it's got kale box switches are just not my favorite due to their construction and the fact that if you want to lubricate them, it's, it's more work and you run the risk of ruining the switch if you lose the tiny little button under the box. So I just wish that they'd stick with the natural or the, the Cherry MX style. I mean, it works. It, it, I don't see the, the box really being that much more. I mean, if you have a dustproof stem, you're not going to really get that much dust or any detritus inside of the switch that's going to affect it. So... But that's just my opinion. I know there's a lot of folks out there that swear by the box switches. This is just my opinion. Now, I, I will say that I'm I'm going to be putting this as my daily driver um, to get going because I really enjoy this. And TKO still still stand as my favorite, though I got to say I, I'm becoming quite fond of 65%, but I'm also becoming quite fond of 1800s. So it's just funny how things shift over time. But I got to say, I, I do like this. The legends on the um, on these front shine through keycaps are, they're different. They're what I would call more of like a futuristic kind of look. Um, all of the um, modifier keys are in all caps, which I kind of prefer all caps or all lowercase. I, I don't like when they mix cases. Uh, case when it comes to uh, modifier keys on a keyboard. I like how the arrows are done. I like how several things on here are done. But I gotta say, I like the lines. And while it's definitely got some substantiality, it's not like something that's gonna be like, oh, this is too heavy. I mean, I think I could carry this around in my bag as it weighs about as much as my laptop does maybe a little bit less but we will get into that when we get into the specs i'm also going to take a quick look at the software to see what kind of functionality we have but i gotta say that right now this is for now on first impression it's quickly rising up the ranks of favorite tkls because this is just it's a solid machine with good looks plenty of features and usually I've been happy with Kidios, the software. They usually do provide a, almost as much functionality as, say, Vi or Q, QMK, but I still have to use Windows. I'm on a Linux machine, so I want to see more manufacturers give the option. Here, you can use our closed source software or you can flash QMK. And I mean, all of these MCUs in one way or the other are compatible you might have to write or share the library like the, the the blob for what particular mcu you're using but you can fork the qmk source control and as long as you provide that source in there without it being a private blob you can create i mean even if you create a, a fork of qmk but as long as it has the ability to you know to program it uh, to do a via key map and control it in via for those of us that don't have Windows and we run Mac or Linux, which is about half of the people out there right now, depending on, you know, if you're looking worldwide, just U.S., a lot of people run operating systems other than Windows. So being stuck to a Windows closed source software is... If, if the hardware that you're purchasing works on a Linux machine then it should be able to be programmed and controlled for Linux machines. Same for a Mac OS. I mean, 
I see a lot of people that purchase keyboards that say we have Windows and Mac mode. And they assume that because the keyboard has a Mac mode, they also have Mac software. Then they purchase the keyboard, they get it, and then they're posting questions on our subreddit and others. Where do I find the download for the Mac software for this keyboard? And it's like, there is none. And they're like, but it said that it's got Windows and Macintosh mode. It's like, yes, it has the modes so that you can, you know, that basically it switches the alt and the command and it makes the function row, if it has a function row, act as the Mac uh, command strip or command control, basically Mac specific commands. So that's that's really all the Mac mode does. Just because it has Mac mode does not mean that it is programmable from Mac unless it is a QMK via keyboard. All right, so let me go ahead and take this and take a look at what the Windows software to this looks like and see what kind of functionality we have. And we'll come back with the specs as well. All right, so we took a look at the software. Um, there actually is a Macintosh version for Key Duo, so got to give them props for that, though still missing Linux. But having the Macintosh software, that's your Key Duo is one of the few companies that actually does offer it. And so that in my opinion, is pretty good. The software uh, is pretty basic. You do have at least one function layer, um, and it marks out the ones that are already mapped for the light controls and the modes and everything. Um, so you can't obviously modify those, but all the rest of the keys are, you know, you can, like, say, create a macro and bind it to, say, function F or what have you. So, and you can remap the top layer. Um, it also has per key RGB. I kind of did this uh, Lakers theme. I just selected the uh, purple for the modifiers and yellow for the alphas and the arrows. And um, I don't know, looks pretty cool. I really like this keyboard though, I gotta say. I mean, the, um, the gasket mounting is, in my opinion, almost perfect. It's, it's not like super soft even though I read that it does have flex cuts and there is flex cuts in the plate. So um, I'm sure it has it in the PCB as well on the PCB, but it's just, it's a very pleasant feel and it sounds so nice. And I really like the lines on it. I um, I know Kidoos watches my videos. They always, share with me you know things they like you know about the video and they're, they're happy that i pointed this out or that out so um they were sending me the he keyboard which i have and i'll be doing here shortly but um they know that i like tkls and so they sent me this one out kind of as a surprise and i i must say i appreciate it um this is definitely going into my rotation like i said i'm honestly surprised i'm happy with the switches the way they are even though i'm just not the biggest fan of kale switches though at some time at some point in the future i will come back and load up some different keycaps some different switches um but for right now i'm honestly this is a, a nice setup i i like how it's it's um i like how this has been implemented i i like the design i like the execution I like how it sounds. I like how it feels. And um, it's it's one of those keyboards that makes me go, yeah. And there's, uh, it, there's a few that strike my fancy in every respect. And this one almost does. If it had QMK via, then that's it. I'd be over the moon. But, I mean, it is a three mode. And let's go ahead and give that a shot. Let's see how fast it connects go ahead and turn it on i think it starts yeah four i believe is the um dongle let's start with bluetooth and let me all right it's blinking fast let me take a look here key duos 5.0 but it has 5.0 and 3.0 okay right. it connected pretty quickly yeah, and it's working. All right, nice. Very nice. 
All right, now let's try with the 2.4. All right, I got the dongle in. And, oh, that was basically instant. As soon as I plugged it in, now it did go to sleep, but... Oh, yeah, you can set the, the sleep timeouts so on both 2.4 and um, on Bluetooth, which I think is pretty nice. So um, it's BLE, I believe, so... I don't know if it's going to use more power over one over the other, but you can set if you want it to go to sleep when it's on battery power. So, which is a, which is a good feature in my opinion. So, we have some pretty fast connectivity and it seems to work good, even though, um, even the 2.4 works good. And I am, and I am in a very, um, very crowded uh, area. I mean, there's 2.4. I don't know how many dozens of networks that I'm able to see just from my living room, let alone if I go outside. So the fact that it's uh, it connected that quick and it works is nice. Again, um, it's definitely a nice aluminum TKL, and it's one that brings a different style of design. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Key News MJ87 Pro, a three mode aluminum bodied TKL. It comes with a gasket mounted flex cut PC plate and a three and five pin south facing PCB with hot swap sockets. It has an IXPE sheet above the PCB and a pour on foam between the plate and the PCB assembly, as well as some dampening below the PCB. It also has side RGB. It is available in a both bare bone and pre-built configuration with the prices ranging from $129.99 to $159.99 depending on options. This one here is preloaded with box coffee ice cream tactile switches from Kale and double shot side shine through OEM PBT keycaps. This keyboard has a battery of 4,800 milliamp hours and comes weighing in at 1,652 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters while the back sits at 31 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 6 degrees. I gotta say, $129 bare bone and between 150 and 160 preloaded with switches and keycaps. Now there is a gray or silver case. This one, there's also an apricot colored one. Um, I've got to say, honestly, for the value, I mean, for the weight, for the design, um, yes, it doesn't have alternate layouts, uh, but I, I, I do, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I know they did an ISO. I'm pretty sure they did an ISO of the, uh, the NJ80. Um, I have everyone except for one keyboard from them. I have to say, they don't put out that many keyboards, but the keyboards they put out are very good. Um, the quality of this, the workmanship, the price. Yes, I know to compete with some other in-stock keyboards, I mean, you're looking at a keyboard that, I mean, all right, let me just do a quick comparison. Now, don't get me wrong. I do love the Monsgate keyboard. It is a solid hunk of aluminum. And it's, you know, it's quite substantial. And its design is cool. But it's a fairly, except for the side, it's fairly, you know, simple kind of wedge. And not that I'm going to say that that makes it worth less. I mean, this is actually weighs more than this one so not that it's an exact comparison because i mean yes the mons geek does have qmk via and it is a solid keyboard don't do not do not don't mistake that that i mean this one is different yes it's closed source i would really love to see key duos jump into the space i mean i'm starting to work on some hand wired kits and i mean MCUs are so cheap nowadays. I found I found some Picos for like two bucks a piece that I think will work. They're cloned, 
Pi Picos, but they have the RP2040 chip on it. So um, now I know that's primary ZMK, but I would be happy TMK, ZMK, QMK, and open source firmware, but do both. I mean, you're, you've already got the team or you know that's working on the closed source software, but use microcontroller units that will work with both. And even if it's one way, once you flash to stop, you know, this open source firmware, you cannot flash back. Now, if you could, that would be pretty awesome. I don't know of a single keyboard that has a closed source software that you can flash a open source firmware like QMK, Vial, uh, ZMK, TMK, all the, the different uh, MK firmwares that are out there and flash back. If you guys could do that, I think that you would definitely corner a certain segment of the market. There are a lot of people moving towards Linux, so much so that the few times I have gone on to my little Linux rants here on my channel, um, I've had a number of comments um, across different videos of, hey, why don't you start a Linux channel? I use it here and there for work, but I'd really love to switch over all the way because I've been using Linux now, my primary desktop for over 15 years. And I mean, I really don't miss it. Yes, have I needed to install virtual machines for certain projects that I work on that require Visual Studio, require Windows only software? Yes, I've had to do that. Usually I keep a physical machine, a spare one running Windows, um, but a VM is just so easy to just roll back to a snapshot of clean and just keep on going. I mean, yeah, you can do that with physical machine too. I know. Um, but very, I mean, when I moved and I decided, okay, I'm, I'm, and I started with Ubuntu actually, I mean, I started way back in the nineties with Red Hat. There are a lot of people that are asking and moving towards Linux. This may not be the year of the Linux desktop, but I definitely think that this is the century of the Linux desktop. It is a slow adoption process, but it's happening, especially with what's going on with closed source software. I mean, if I don't de-bloat my Windows install on a VM or on a laptop or whatever, um, there's ads in the start menu. I mean, that's just unacceptable, especially I, I paid for the software. Shouldn't that cover the expense? You're now going to, you know, take everything I do. I mean, Please, if you're using Windows, de-bloat your system because they literally send telemetry on every single thing you do, how often you do it, how long you're on your computer, what programs you open, what programs you install, how long you use them for, on and on and on and on and on. And it's not about hiding anything. It's about we should own our privacy. So I apologize for the rant, but my point is that working on more open source firmwares for your keyboards will take you to that next level because key duos they don't put out too many keyboards not on a i gotta we gotta put out a keyboard every month or so no but the keyboards they put out are so well thought out well designed and their quality i i still have my nj80 which is three three and a half years old i want to say it's i mean it's been a while and I still have it in rotation and it still works. It, it, they're, it's just quality. I mean, I've had other keyboards that I've had for a short period of time and, you know, they just start flaking out, whether it be some sort of debounce issue, which if it's a closed source firmware, there's usually nothing I can do. But if it's open source, yeah, I could fix that. Um, I could rebuild the firmware, maybe adjust because my particular keyboard has, you know, whatever, just veered off of that normal range but i can go to that outside range and fix my debounce issues and there we go i can keep on trucking it gives the keyboard a lot more value and um and i'm going to send this to them in the email when i shoot them the link to let them know that the video is live they have nobody has pre-editorial on any of my videos i once it's available to you guys it's available to the companies as well when they send me out products for free um and and I do remain honest. And yes, there are some companies that because of my honesty have said, sorry, we're not going to send you anything else. All right. If there's a product that comes along that I think is important enough to take a look at, I'll buy it out of my own pocket and I'll take a look at it. But 
it makes it much easier for me to work with companies that are not only, you know, because it's not like I'm, I'm just going to hate on a product without valid reason. When I take a look at a product and I find flaws, I'm going to call it out. Just like I lately, the last one I did was the, the drop CSTM, the, you can't have any vowels, 65. Uh, I was honest about it. And a lot of people agreed with me. Yes, some people didn't agree with me. And that's fine. Everyone's going to have their opinion. But that's kind of one of the reasons why I have to purchase my stuff from Drop. Anyway, Kidos is a company that not only continues to put out very interesting keyboards. I mean, uh, actually, my kid has it right now. One of my favorite 65% is the NJ68 Pro. Not only because it has a screen and a metal knob that they fold in and out, just it's so cool. And I, every time I take it out, I mean, I don't take it out that often. I don't go out that often, but you know, Hey, I'm going to sit at Starbucks while my kids do something, you know, when I'm just waiting here and I don't want to drive all the way home. And I pull that out. I always, always, people will come up to me and be like, what keyboard is that? You know, and it always starts conversations and I may not be the most social butterfly, but if somebody comes up to me and talks to me, I can talk to practically anybody. And I actually know a couple languages, so that helps too, especially when I'm in airports. But the NJ68 definitely stands out. The NJ80, when it came out, it was one of the most popular 75% with the knobs that, you know, after the GMMK Pro, which copied the SAT 75. Um, and it, to this date, it's still being sold. And I actually have a new revision of the NJ80, which I'll be reviewing here shortly in the next couple of days. But it's the magnetic switch version. So they're even moving into that space. And I'm going to have three so that I can compare to each other. But that said, I mean, I know there are some TKLs, uh, the Zoom TKL, uh, a couple other TKLs that are custom that you know, are about like 150 to 179. So they're a little bit more bare bone, but they do have, you know, the custom layouts. But other than that, I mean, for somebody who doesn't need the custom layouts, I mean, the TKL for me, it's, I mean, mine is the, the macro pad, which if I need one, I have several just laying around. I could just pop it out, plug it in. And I've got the number pad. I got what I need so that I can, work but there are there's only certain tasks that i actually need a numpad sitting next to me most of the time when i'm coding unless i'm whatever i'm coding is requires a lot of database or csv files etc i don't need the macro pad this has everything i need um and i do believe that they usually put out iso versions but don't don't quote me on that that's just it could be just me just misremembering. Anyway, I believe that they designed some very interesting keyboards. Um, I like that the switch is on the outside here. Having to pull off the keycap to turn wireless on or off. It's just not my idea of user-friendly, but that's just me. Um, but I like how subtle they have their logo. And I like that their logo is modern and simple. It just... That speaks to me. I like the, the flat head or the the flush head or flat screws that they used for putting it together. I'm actually looking forward to opening it up. I like the uh, side RGBs um, and I'm going to play more with the lights. Like I said, I did a custom Lakers uh, colorway on here. This keyboard uh, actually filmed, I filmed the half of the video yesterday and when I was done with a certain part i took it put it on my desk and i've been using it and i've just been enjoying it it's it's um not only does it sound great it's a pleasure to type on because like i said for me it has that that perfect middle ground where it's it's not it's not jumping on a trampoline plexi but it's flexy enough that it it's almost like I'm falling fast, but I'm landing on a pillow. Or I'm landing on a couple of pillows because it just kind of softens it to where I don't even feel the stop. And that's kind of an analogy, I guess, between my fingers and falling. But 
that was probably silly. Anyway, I've only used it for a few hours and I've enjoyed it plenty. And it's funny because I switched out from another TKL. That one costs more than this one. And it does have QMK Vio, but if I had to pick one or the other, I'd pick this one, even though it has closed source software. Because yes, there are some macros and some things that I, I do like to program into my keyboards, and I can do that, do it on the Windows machine, and it stores it on the keyboard. I can go use it on my, my Linux machine, so I'm fine. It's just that one time that I have to set up the macros, and that's it. Um, because it's not a smaller uh, layout. I don't have to really worry about, you know, having to map certain keys to keys that are missing. So I can use this. I would rather it be QMK Vi, yes, but I can say that that other keyboard that I've been daily driving, the TKL, um, I prefer this one over that one. And that one's aluminum as well. And the reason is, is because it's, it's a design that while it's modern, it's kind of classic at the same time. And it just works. And that's one thing I like about their driver. I know it sounds silly because Akko does it too. And I like it. If they're going to use closed source software, use a single driver package. That way I don't need to have a separate program installed for every single keyboard. If I have 12 Red Dragons, that means I have 12 different <laughs> Red Dragon software. And not to just pick on Red Dragon. Almost every other company does it. So I like the fact that, I mean... Kidos is definitely designing these in-house. and They're the ones that are owning this. And they've got a good team. From my continual use of their keyboards, from all of their keyboards at one point or another reaching the top 10 list in my whatever category when it comes to keyboards because they just make a good keyboard. And I don't know, I feel like some keyboard they're released and it's like did anyone use this before they put it out or was this just all on paper and no one even bothered to type because it's like i type on them like I, I, this keyboard feels like it was made by somebody that never typed on it and with key duos their design language talked to me it's it's defined it's clear it's concise it has been touched and typed on by many people and I can just tell that. And I'm going to end my rant on Kidos right now. I just, like I said, there's a few companies out there that are really doing a great job in this field, in this market, in this hobby. And I mean, just like I'll call out companies that are doing bad things, I like to praise the companies that are doing good things because I, I think it's important that we not only hear complaints, but we hear positive things. There's already enough negativity and toxicity in just regular life. Let's not bring it into the hobby. Um, let's just be kind, you know, enjoy other people's builds, enjoy our own builds. If we may not like the color somebody else picked. If they're happy with it, then let's be happy for them. And that's why, that's where my keep calm keyboard on comes from, is that, you know, this should be, peaceful thing that we do to bring us in touch with ourselves to bring balance to wash away the stress of the day um because to me i mean it's enjoyable unfortunately as it is with a lot of hobbies and i've experienced this throughout my life there's there seems to always be it's usually a much smaller subsection of the people that are a part of the hobby but I, there's no other way to call them but the gatekeepers the people that you know, they decide how you should enjoy the hobby. The best advice that I can give you is just don't listen to them. They're negative for whatever reasons. Honestly, I feel sorry for them more than I, you know, I mean, yes, it gets frustrating sometimes, but I mean, their negativity and their need to make other people feel bad about something that we all should just enjoy, whether we're dealing with a $40 keyboard or a $400 or a $4,000 keyboard. And that's why we call them budget keeps, budget keeps, because it's budget to you. Budget means finding a good deal, making the best, you know, keyboard purchase for the budget that you have, you know, shopping smartly, they waiting for sales, but it doesn't mean cheap. And because there's no such thing. If you enjoy the keyboard, 
doesn't matter what you paid for it. It matters if you enjoy it, if it helps you to complete your job better, if it helps you to enjoy your game better, if it pleases you just from the sound of it and the feel of it, from using it every day in your day-to-day -day tasks, then that's all that should really matter. Let that negative stuff just keep on flying by. There's no need to let that bother you. So, sorry, I had my little hippie moment there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the NJ87 Pro. And like I said, this one's loaded with the ice cream, or no, coffee ice cream tactile uh, from Kale. They're box style switches, which again, I usually don't like, but in this keyboard, I'm, I'm going to leave it in there for a minute. I am going to come back to this keyboard to do um, some mods to it, switch out the switches. The key cam's actually already been planning on that, but I'm going to use it for a little while this way. So if there's any questions, any comments you guys got about this keyboard or something you'd like you know, to for me to take a look at when I go in there, because I'll probably um, replace the stabilizers as well, but I'll see you know, if there has to be a certain brand to fit under the plate and so on. And I'm also going to reach out to... Um, key duos to see if there are any other plates because I'd love to try an aluminum plate, an FR4 plate, heck, even a brass plate on here because um, I think that the design and the construction of this will lend itself to numerous sound profiles and I think the plate will help us reach that. So if you guys have anything to add, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, I would love to get conversation started and if you enjoyed this video a like and a subscribe goes a long way i'm almost to 5,000 subscribers i honestly never thought i'd be to 50 subscribers so i thank each and every one of you that watch my videos i know sometimes i can go off on a bit of a uh, get into the weeds and go off on a rant but i always try to come back and i will always remain honest in my review of keyboards and yes i do have a lot of mod videos planned i'm trying to just get through my reviews this winter was a little crazy but everything's almost started to get back to normal um, so there will be more mod videos i really want to try to do at least one mod video a week you know and leave time for other stuff i have a whole bunch of franken switches that i got to bring to you guys i got a whole like literally a box full of projects of mods that i want to do and some mods that i think will be new um better ways to tune stabilizers and well a whole bunch of different stuff i'm also going to do some videos that get a little bit more into uh, via and how to program via and how certain keyboards split up windows and mac because it's a big confusion for folks and how to load up your JSON file in case it's not a true via keyboard or it's not not it's not built off a QMK source or it's not in the via database. So I'll show you guys how to do that as well. Until the next transmission, do keep calm and keyboard on.